Wow, say hello to my left friend. No, this is it, man. This is it. No, this is this it. Is this is, it. is the We're sorry that you had to see that. We thought that maybe today we'd have a little competition. Believe it or not, we do things completely different in Florida than they do here. These guys up here, they're doing things the slow, archaic, ancient way, and we'd like to show you the better way to do things. Oh, please. Because there's a faster way to run your pickets and get them nice and straight. It's this, the way. That's it, throw down. Fine. The first thing we have to figure out though, I'm gonna get one picket to start with and then I have to run a full section and we're gonna time it. Dan's gonna get one picket. I'm gonna let you cheat because you're still not gonna win. So let's get your second picket set up. I'm still gonna have to run your stupid string. I mean, this is good string. We sell this string and it's great. If you need string, link down below in the description. It's good string if you need it, but we don't need it for this. But let's have this competition and then we'll talk about it because there's some other hidden surprises that my tool does yours can't even touch. So a bump board, instead of setting up a string, we just use our bump board. We set the bump board up here. We gotta get, there we go, there we go. Okay. We'll just hop from post to post and we'll use our bump board to get all of our pickets up to the right height. So I don't have a bump board, I have a string. So it's gonna do the exact same thing that the bump board's doing, but it's gonna go all the way across and I'll bump my pickets up to my string. Now you wanna tell them the other thing you have to do that I don't have to do. So anytime we have grade changes and rolls, you have to set a picket up at each one of your posts. And then when he gets to that picket, he's gonna to have to take it off, undo his string, and then put his string up to the picket that he just put on and keep going. And that's a very time consuming way to do things. It works, but it's slow. You're not gonna see all that. We're gonna give him the best shot. This is the most ideal conditions that you could possibly have. The other thing is there's a whole bunch of stuff built into this particular tool that your string won't do. And we're gonna show you at the end some of the other things that we can do with this, like board on board and shadow box that your string doesn't know how to do. It's not smart enough. It's in there somewhere. Okay. You wanna go first or you want me to set the bar? I think I could set the bar. First, let's get your cheat board set up. So we're doing a six inch reveal. Reveal is how much of the picket sticks up above. Up, 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 right there. This is such a cheat. I can't believe I'm letting you do Dude. this. Now level your picket. You gonna level it? Of course I am. Show me how I've been messing up all these many, many years. On your mark, get set, go. Look at all that wasted time. Look at all that wasted energy. You're already 25 seconds behind me. Oh man. 30 now. Oh man, that's bad. I feel like, whoa, 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 what kind of? Dude. You're going so fast that you're doing probably some of the worst. No, I'm doing. Just keep going, keep going. Oh yeah, you're killing it. <laughs> what, you think there's something better out there? I think this is some of the worst. Like he's obviously in a hurry. This is, this is bad. This is not straight. And I'm gonna prove it here in just a minute. You need another board? You just ran out of boards? Okay, so I might have one that's just a touch high. This is such a joke. It's <laughs> bad. I expected you to actually take your time and try and get them right. Well, I am. Okay, that's it, that's it, you're good. I don't really care about nailing all that stuff because that's just a speed thing. Anybody can nail these rails. What high on that one? It's just that yeah, one Yeah, here, let's. Let's just see here. Obviously when he's doing this out in the field, he's not trying to hurry and he's doing a lot better job than this. But this is, these are some of the problems you can run into with the string is you can slowly creep it up if you're constantly nudging it just a little bit. And I think that that's what we're gonna see right here. So you can clearly see that we're way higher here and you can see how these boards are not straight. Nothing straight. I was watching him constantly push that string up and up and up. And so it just kind of worked its way up and he's probably three-eighths high right there. 
and then this is a little low and this one's high and then over here we're a little low and this is not the way to do this. Now let's show you the way to do this. I'll show you how a professional does it. I will not cheat and start with my board up there ready to go. I'm just gonna start with my gun ready to go. I feel like that you're gonna do a lot better of a job of getting these straight. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't take much to beat that. Can I go? Tell me. Tell me when I can go. <laughs> okay. Get set. Go. Okay. Oh, I said it just a little too far. I screwed oh, you're, myself. You're 10 seconds in right now. I know. I just totally hurt myself there. Notice we're working since I'm right-handed. I'm working from right to left. It's a lot more natural. And then I'm not crossing my body. You might have gotten a little bit better time than me. Yeah, and I screwed up in the beginning. I put this a little too far over. So. It's really important to talk about some of the key features of this and why we did what we did and why we didn't do what we didn't do. This is built like this because it has weight so that we can't work our way up by bumping pickets and have the same problem he had. If we make something that's too light, we have a tendency to push up on it with every picket just a little bit, and then we can get out of kilter, and that's a problem. Having a positive stop where I don't have to sit there and worry about a flick it to see if I'm touching my string or not touching my string, I don't have those issues that he had. We can set this up here and you'll see that Unlike what he had, it's perfect. Now what we don't want to do, we know that all of our posts are set perfectly to hype. This rail here, this rail is probably crooked. Almost all these rails are probably crooked. So I would never ever want to set this up and move my, move my dummy picket to the middle of this rail because that's not a fixed height. So we're always going to set it up at a post where we know our post is to the correct height and it's perfect. Never ever over here. I won't even set it up over here. I want it as close to this post as I can possibly get it, preferably touching it or on that post so that we know that that rail is going to be perfectly straight. That way I don't have any dips and dives in my fence as we go along. So that's why we set this dummy picket up right at the post every time. I would be silly if I didn't also mention this. Could we build a bump board out of something like a two by four? Absolutely. On a budget, we could do that. It has its downfalls because it's light and you have to build it. They can wear out and they can be crooked and they aren't gonna do the things that I'm gonna show you now. With this, I can do a bunch of stuff that he can't do with this string like board on board and shadow box very easily. And if you've ever built a shadow box or some people will call it a good neighbor privacy fence, you know how difficult that can be. Maybe you don't wanna spend the cost and you're just doing a straight cedar fence like this one. Maybe it's not worth it for this, but if you're gonna do a shadow box fence, you will spend so much time trying to get those pickets spaced nicely so that you can cover up all your posts. It will easily pay for itself to have a tool like this in your arsenal Let's show you what this thing does. We're just gonna set this up. Oh wait, a couple of things to note. You're probably noticing that these two by fours are not great. They're not great, these are coals. We just decided we'd use some cheap stuff that was laying around rather than destroy good material. Other thing is, is that really for this, we spaced our posts out so that we didn't have to cut any two by fours. I would not recommend doing that if you're gonna do board on board. It makes this just a little bit short. Try and keep it from edge of post to edge of post. Center of post to center of post, maybe about seven and a half feet. It's gonna work a lot better for you. So we've kind of dummied this up just a little bit. To get where we're looking for. But the way this works to do a good neighbor is we set our picket right here at the post. Typically, this would also be right over a post. This would be over your post because we wanna cover all these posts up. We don't wanna have a section where all of a sudden we covered half a post and it looks kind of weird. Once we've got that, we line that edge up over here and then we look at these marks right here. It's telling us that three and a quarter inch space will be our red line, three and a half inch will be blue line, three and three quarter inch space will be green, and a four inch space, which is the widest we could possibly go on a good neighbor fence would be our orange line. So right now we're pretty dang close to that blue line if you see back there when we're lined up with that other end. So we're just gonna put a picket to the right of every blue line as we go down this. And I don't have to do any math. I don't have to figure anything out. I just know that if I line it up and I put this even with my picket on this side, I can look and see what line is closest down here. It's the blue line, so I'm gonna go every blue line. The bad thing is, is that I'm gonna have to do this backwards from the way that I would want to, because I'd rather be working 
the other way because I'm right handed. So I have to reach across my body to grab those pickets and that's not ideal. So now you can see that I have a perfect space all the way and we've covered up all our posts and we have all our stuff up. So now come over here and level all these up. A lot of times people just use a torpedo level. And maybe in another video, I'll show you a better way to even do this. But for today, we're just gonna stick with this one tool. How are you gonna do this with your string? I can't. You're gonna go over there and do math and then hopefully do your math right. There you go. If we didn't wanna cover these posts up, we could do this a little bit differently. We could have a gap here and then you'd see the backside of the post, but because we like to cover our posts up, It's a little bit more of an eyeball game, especially if you're gonna do it the way we did it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna put this up here and then we're gonna basically just cover the gap evenly between these. So it's more just judgment and making sure you keep all your gaps as even as possible. It's really hard to use the same method that we used on the front side, on the back side, because it doesn't really work out the exact same because we have these extra pickets right here and we have these extra pickets right here covering up those gaps. The biggest thing is, is to just put this over the gap and center it up. And that's just done with a lot of eyesight, just kind of judgment. But when it gets up, it looks the same. It looks very uniform. So that's what we're looking for. And that's how to do shadow box. Now, the next thing you're asking yourselves is how do I do board on board? Well, it's done much the same way. We don't have to worry about covering up our posts because all the posts will get covered up. The only reason we have this problem is because we want to make sure there's a picket right at the post. And board on board, it doesn't matter. So the way I do this one, so it's orange right here at the end of the thing. So I could just go here and that's gonna give us a four inch space. Or I could go a three and a half inch gap because my blue lines up with the side of this picket here. So I think I'm gonna do that. That seems really good. Now I can work right to left again, which works really well for me since I'm right handed. Right there at the end of the board. And then I can slide this down and just keep going because there again, it doesn't matter where my picket ends up at the post. If it's halfway over the post, it doesn't matter because it'll all get covered up. So just ran the blue. Now we'll show you some other stuff right here. Now this is the way we do this. And that's one of the neat features of the 2.0 is that it's wider so you can double stack boards. Normally I do the bottom, but again, this is for demonstration purposes. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom. So all we do here is we put this up here and I can tell whether it's centered just by looking at the dog ear reveal right here. So obviously that's not centered. I have a big V here and a little V here. So I just want to have the same V here and I want to bump it up there. We've had to train a lot of people. You need this nail to go through this picket, through this picket and into the two by four. A lot of people will try and nail in here and miss all this picket. And then the nail is only sticking into the two by four by a fraction of an inch and then all the pickets fall off and you wonder why that happened. You need to make sure to either use longer nails if you want to do that, or the better yet is to go through this picket, make sure you're hitting the picket behind it and then into the two by four. So right over on the edges so you can make sure and get that. See, that's not right. Right there is going to be pretty close. And then, and then, That's it. So you might be asking yourself, what are these cuts in the top of the straight topper for? Well, that is to give you a different gap. So if we didn't want to use these marks down here to spread out our pickets when we're doing board on board, this mark is going to give us a three and a half inch gap between pickets when you're using a standard five and a half inch wide picket. And this mark here will give you a two inch wide. With this mark lined up here, if I put another picket right here, line this mark up, that gives us a two inch gap here. And then we just keep going down here and we put one to the right of every one of those marks and we get a nice two inch marks. Alternatively, that's another way for board on board. Likewise, if we move this to the edge here and then I put a picket here, that's gonna give me a three and a half inch gap here, which is gonna leave me about an inch overlap on each one of these pickets so that I can get my nail into that picket. And likewise here, put it to the right of that, I got another three and a half inch gap. So that's what these marks up here are for. Just another way of doing board on board. So you can choose the one that works best for you. So now that we've showed you how we use the straight topper to do our regular 
stockade fence. We've shown you the value that it has to do board on board as well as shadow box, which are all very difficult fences to do if you don't have a tool like this to help you with all the math and get your pickets facing correctly. The time savings alone that you pick up just from being able to do all those various types of fences is huge. If you have any one of these projects coming up, a board on board or a stockade, I would highly recommend picking this up, even if you're a homeowner, because it'll save you so much time. If you're just doing stockade fence, maybe build a jig, or perhaps you still want to use a string line. It's worked for a lot of years, it's just a lot slower, so know going into it that you could have the problems that Dan had, where your string will creep up and then your fence top isn't straight. Are you gonna, are you gonna make the change? Are you ever gonna go and do another wood fence with a string? I think if you were taking the time to do it right and make sure your tops are even, probably would have added another 30 seconds pretty easily. And then Agreed. you didn't, you know, if you're rolling down a hill, you'd had to have more time and removing the picket and then putting your string back down to it. And it just adds a lot of time that I don't have to take with my straight top, right? I can just run boards all day long. The question you need to ask yourself is what is your time worth? Have you ever ran two of those at once? Yes, we do it all the time. Every, every truck that we have in Florida has two of them on it. That's why this is going on Mark's list of favorite things. And maybe you want to, on your list of favorite things. So for all your fencing tool needs, especially the straight topper, check out the link down below where we will have a link to the store and all the great tools that we supply there. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking, hey, what are those crazy steel posts that they're using? Check out this video over here. And if you'd like to know why there's no dirt at the bottom of our posts and there's no concrete, check out this video right over here. We didn't use any concrete on any of this. It's so good. Hope you have a good dang day. We hope you have a good dang day.